So are these LAIs approved for other diseases besides schizophrenia? Uh, yes, uh, the, the, a couple of them are approved for bipolar disorder, bipolar mania, and the FDA approved it for them because ma patients with bipolar disorder also have adherence problems. May have psychosis uh, But uh, not because of, of anosognosia and lack of insight, but because they miss the high. Oh. They miss the karma. They, they felt so energetic and so creative and so talented during the, the mania, hypomania. They don't realize how dangerous it could be, though, because when, in, uh, if mania progresses, it becomes very dangerous. They become very you know, uh, aggressive and they can commit crimes, in fact. But uh, they stopped the medication uh, because going back to their normal self wasn't, wasn't good enough. Uh, they feel like they felt so much better on, 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 on when they were manic. So they, mm -hmm. that's why the, the, it was approved for them as well. And of course, the patient has to agree to it uh, to, to, to take it. There's another study I want to tell you about how, how much better the injectable are compared to the oral. This was a study done at UCLA by a very good group of researchers uh, and published in a major journal. Uh, they, they took 100 patients with first episode patients who consented to participate. Half of them got oral, atypical. The other half, injectable, atypical. The same drug. Mm -hmm. Oral, injectable, 50-50. They discharge them from the hospital doing well and follow them up every month for a year. What did they report at the end of the year? This is, this is incredible. Okay. What a difference. 600% higher relapse rate on the oral. 600. 600% difference in relapse and the oral compared to the injectable. This is, it, this is why injectables can be a lifesaver for those mm -hmm. patients. I mean, it's really the, the tremendous impact of getting an injectable is shown in that study. You can actually, we can do better for our patients by giving them injectables. And the psychiatrist must, must be convinced that this is the best thing for their patients. I do. I think this is absolutely what I would do if my own son or daughter becomes schizophrenic. I would give them an injectable when they leave the hospital immediately at the first episode, which is rarely done now. Really, they wait for several episodes, which is a little too late. So if you have a patient who is reluctant to get an injectable because they just don't want a painful shot, even though it may not be very painful, what, how would you counsel that patient? What would you recommend doctors to say to that patient? Yes, that's a, a very important question because m many times uh, psychiatrists say, my patient doesn't want the medication. How can I convince them to take the medication? Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I would suggest. First, you develop a sense of trust, a relationship with the patient. While they're in the hospital taking pills, you see them every day, develop rapport, therapeutic alliance, let them trust you. And then before they get discharged, in the discharge planning phase, which is the last few days before they've been improving, now we're getting ready for discharge planning, that's when I would introduce the long acting as a very important option. Uh, and ex educate the patient, educate the parents also, mm -hmm. so that they know. Because most people people have no idea what schizophrenia is, really. Uh, the general public don't understand how, how what a severe brain disorder it is. So you educate the patient and, and the family. And you to explain, you tell them, look, you don't have to take pills. It's a great relief. And you don't it's have convenient. to remind yourself every day you're taking a pill because you're sick. One injection a month we can give you, and some later, two, every two months or every three months. Mm -hmm. And th that's like four injections a year. How can you, you know, not yeah. accept that instead of taking one pill every single day? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I, I tell them that the benefit of relief from taking pills, but also remind them that this is, you know, yeah, nobody likes uh, needles and injections, but we all take vaccines. Consider this like a vaccine against the return of this illness. Yeah. Okay, it's worse than the flu. It damages the brain. And and then uh, I also uh, tell my patients, look. You think that one injection a month is too much? Let, why don't you come down and I'll show you children in the pediatrics department oh, with boy. juvenile diabetes mm -hmm. who take three injections of insulin a day? Yeah. Because that's what they need to, to stay well. Mm -hmm. Three to injections well. a day of insulin and you cannot take one a month, come on. I mean, kind of let them see the perspective that one a month is not that bad. Okay. Um, and, and, but the important thing is to, the patient should trust you and see that you believe in that. And I tell my patient, if my own family member develops this illness you have. That's what you would do. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. I want to treat you like a family member. Make, it, make them realize that you care about them. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Nasrallah, for this interesting discussion on lock-acting injectable medications. 
We would encourage, if you're a patient watching this or a family member, we would encourage you to speak with your doctor. Also, please feel free to contact the Cures Foundation, C-U-R-E-S-C.org, with uh, any questions you may have. And I want to explain uh, to those who don't know the Cures Foundation that the Cures stands for Comprehensive Understanding Through Research and Education and Schizophrenia. And it's a charitable foundation that, that basically uh, needs donations to continue going on. So I hope that some of our listeners might send, uh, send you uh, a donation as much as they can to help with our programs like this one, like this educational program and any other programs we're doing as well. Please feel free to check out our other videos on YouTube and on our website. Thanks, Bethany. <laughs>